I'm still waiting for a microphone I ordered after my first video, but I hope that this one will sound better. The goal for today is to figure out what is what in RStudio and how to save files. Okay, so here I have RStudio open. It probably looks the same as when you open for the first time. The main tabs here are console. This is where uh, this is where we will execute the code. Environment is where we will see the objects available to us in the current R session. And also files, plots, packages, and help. These are the main tabs. And of course, we need to create our first R script, or basically the file which contains the R code. Different ways to do that. You can hit the plus um, new sheet here. You can do file, new file, R script, or you can just use this shortcut for Windows, it's Control Shift N. So this is the text file or R script where we will write our first R program. For example, we can define new variable here, x equals to 54, y equals to six or six plus x. So this is very simple two line code and it hasn't been executed yet. So we don't know what is y in this case. We know that x we just defined manually, we don't know what is y. We want to use r, for example, to calculate y for us. So how to do it? We need to run the code. There are, again, different ways to run it. You can select it and hit Run. Or you can use the shortcut in RStudio, Control Enter. If you are using Base R Editor, it's R Enter. I usually do Control Enter. And now the code is executed. You will see it appears in the console the executed code, and we have two values in our environment, x and y, which are now available to us. First of all, they appear in the environment. Second, we can view them in the console. For example, you can call x, hit enter, and it will output you the x. Hit y, and you will see the y. So you might notice that R puts these elements in the console. First, it puts this prompt, the greater sign, which basically tells us that R is ready for your new command, the prompt with the blinking cursor. Second, when it outputs the objects, it shows the index or the number of the element which starts the line. Especially when we have long objects for example let's have a, an object z equals to and we can generate a sequence from 100 to 1000 so we generated the sequence in the environment we see the object z it's a vector of integers from uh, the length is indexed from 1 to 901 and if we output Z in the console, here it is. We see that the first element is 100. 17th element is 116. So R wraps this long vector. Sometimes when the objects are too long, the print is truncated. For example, if we do Z from Hundred to ten thousand, and then try to view Z. We cannot see the whole thing, but it's there. Before continuing further, let's set some uh, basic settings for our studio that I recommend you to have set. So let's go to Tools, Global Options. In the General tab, you might see that uh, what is the current R version you are using. Again, RStudio is just the interface. It pulls the R 
installation from your computer. You can change it if you have other R versions installed and you want to use, for example, older R version. You can do the choose specific one, but this one should go with, uh, usually with defaults. The things I'd like you to do here is to uncheck these settings. So we don't have to restore our data and we don't have to save history. It will help you to learn to code using scripts. So save all your work in a R script and then you can redo it or send it to your friend or to a colleague and don't clutter your computer with unnecessary files, especially when we execute our code, sometimes our data files, which save our workspace or basically the environment here, they can be very large. And then you have multiple copies of them. You don't actually need them because you can redo everything from your code and save only whatever pieces you need. So uncheck these things. I have the following option set to ask. So you can set to never or to ask. The difference is when you close RStudio, it will offer you to save the environment. I always say no, but this uh, dialogue helps me or protects me against closing RStudio accidentally. So the next thing, let's go to code. Make sure that the first check mark is on, insert spaces for tab and tab width is four. This is just indentation of code in the R scripts. Then let's go to display. Make sure that show margin is on and margin column is 90 or 100 or so. This thing puts you this line to make sure you don't go too far when you write your code. You can write a complex computation all in one line, but it doesn't make you a good coder because your code should be readable. So don't write too long lines of code. Make sure you don't use horizontal scrolling and this line helps you. Again, now it's set to 90 symbols. Okay, go back to those global options. So we were here. Next one is saving. I like to strip trailing horizontal white space. What it does is, for example, when you have extra spaces here, and then when you hit save, then this space will be gone. Sorry. Coming back. Next, we can go to appearance. Here you can change the background that our studio is using. I'm using Dracula. This is my favorite. Actually, Dracula was the first book I read in English. And this theme provides pretty good contrast of different colors. You can uh, try other themes. For example, here, uh, to me, it's not a very good contrast for comments. And zoom. Zoom is how big the text you can change zoom here, or you can go to the main window and use the shortcuts for um, zooming out is control minus, zooming in is control plus. We can put some comments in the code. For example, we will start the comment with the pound sign, and this will be the part of the code or, the, or just the text which is not executed. Comment. We can put another comment here. So these pieces of code will not be executed. So now we need to save the file and let's talk briefly how to organize files for your statistical projects and, for example, for this tutorial. First, we can create a folder. You can click the three dots to navigate where you want to create the folder, then click new folder. I'll call it R programming. Oh, 
Okay. Then go to that folder. For example, this is the folder for your statistical project. In that folder, you should have subfolders for the data. And I recommend you to have two subfolders for data. One is data raw. Another will be data derived. The difference is in the raw data, you will save the data, for example, for, from your sampling or the data you downloaded from the internet, and you will not modify them. In the folder data derived, you will save something that you calculated and produced from your R code and want to save or share with others. Another folder can be code for the code that you will produce. Another thing that we'll talk more about in the next video is how to set the working directory.